Hello friends, it's often difficult to choose the right implant for your patient. With multiple implants in the market and multiple companies promoting their implants, it's challenging for the surgeon to figure out what is the right implant for the patient. It's very important for us as scientific people to choose the right implant based on long-term evidence, registry data and published evidence. So this is a video in which we'll demonstrate various type of knees with absolutely no intention to promote any particular type of knee. We'll highlight the strengths and weaknesses of every knee design with respect to our patient's needs, sizes, shapes and patellar issues. So we'll base our study on published data, long-term registry data and other published evidence along with our own experience of having used all these types of knees in patients over the last 10 years. So let's start uh, with the Depu knee which is the PFC Sigma and has been used in our market for the last 25 years. Excellent performance but with a few issues. So if you look at the design of PFC, we're talking of the posterior stabilized design. The box is very high and the box ratio is too long and the reason is that you can put a stem in the femur. There is a provision of putting a stem in the femur and that is the, why the box is longer or taller as compared to other knee designs and this leads to higher incidence of patellar clunk and painful crepitus as is published in many papers. Uh, also there is a limitation of having only five sizes and you can downsize your tibia to only one. That is if you have a three femur you can only put a two and a half tibia and in Indians the especially ladies the tibia really comes down very drastically and if you want to do a 1.5 on a three femur you cannot do that in spite of the fact that your tibia may overhang posterior laterally and that's a little compromise. Uh, the reference system is posterior so essentially what that means is that this will move this arm will move and it will size your femur but you will put your pins here based on the posterior condyles and your references as per posterior condyles. Now if you downsize based on these two reference pins you are ten tending to notch. The original AP cutting jigs were very big but now we have better instruments. So suppose you have a posterior reference of this size 3 and you think you are notching you can go up minus 2 or you think you are proud and you will overstuff the anterior compartment, you will come down and you will cut less of the posterior condyles. So it's very important to understand your instruments and what they are doing. So this AP cutting jig with plus 2, minus 2 going up and down is pretty useful because that will help you titrate your flexion gap without notching anteriorly or becoming proud anteriorly. So that's that's the key. So the advantages I believe of the depu system are that you can put uh, a rod in the femur though the, though the cases for those are very less. You can put a rod in the primary tibia. That's an advantage definitely. Uh, the advantage is that on the AP cutting block you can go two up and two down depending how you want to titrate your flexion gap and how you are anteriorly. The disadvantage is the higher incidence of patellar clunk, crepitus uh, and painful crepitus because of the taller box. But overall good long term data in the registries. Now let's come to the second knee which is uh, the Zimmer's LPS next gen design. Again a very good design and it has got very good uh, long term data in Australian registry. In fact, it's the one of the best performing knees at 15 year follow up uh, in the Australian registry. Now, uh, let's come to this design. Very excellent small box, uh, very good patellar tracking 
Uh, and Zimmer, in fact, is one knee in which the patellar problems are very less. There was a study published in clinical orthopedics and related research where the co they compared the patellar symptoms of all the designs and Zimmer had the least patellar problems because of an excellent tracking mechanism and a very good Q angle. Now, this is anterior referencing. Now, what that means is that you will size here and you will rotate three or five degrees whatever you want but you will put your pins here and this moves with the anterior mechanism so you if you downsize you will not notch but you will cut more of posterior condyles so what that means is that you will put your holes here and once you put your block there in these two holes you can turn it slightly medial lateral that's one thing second thing is that the the size of the AP cutting block is same as the size of the component. So that's, that's an additional thing and you can really lateralize. You can put a finger and see your anterior reference. And if you want to come down or up, that's not possible in this. So you really need to make your holes again. There is no way to come up and down once you're committed. Another disadvantage is that you make your primary holes at the time of AP cutting block. And once you take your trial and you want to downsize, you cannot do that because you're already committed with the holes. So that's a slight disadvantage, but yeah, not that much. If you want to downsize in an anterior referencing system, you will not do anything anteriorly. So your block will remain in the same place as far as your anterior reference is con concerned, but you will cut more posteriorly. Uh, the tibial sizes are also pretty good and you can go two up and two down. So that's an advantage over depu in which you can only go one up and one down. Overall, a very good design both for CR and PS. And the advantage is a very low incidence of patellar clunk and painful patellar crepitus. Now let's go to the Biomed design. Uh, Biomed is design is the Vanguard. And the advantages over Depu and Zimmer, which have five or six sizes, here we have 10 sizes. And sizes are uh, as per the millimeters in AP. So it makes it very simple, 55, 57.5, 60, uh, and up to 80. So this system is again a posterior referencing. Another advantage is that you can dial your rotation from zero to one, to two, to three. It's not fixed three or five degrees. And you can really put, uh, a particular instrument here to see that you are parallel to the interepicondylar axis and the size difference is only two millimeters two and a half millimeters so that's really an advantage you have 10 femoral sizes uh, and in case you want to downsize here we have to remember that it will notch so there is a small slot here and with this screwdriver if you are in between sizes so suppose you are in between 65 and 67.5 you can take this little up come on 65 and then put your pins and you will be absolutely fine and because the difference is only two two millimeters between components the incidence of notching or any that kind of problem on the anterior surface is minimal nevertheless you have this beautiful small instrument in case you have your pin slots here and you want to go up, you think you're notching, you can go up or you want to come down, you think you're proud, you can also come down so that you're flush with the anterior surface and posteriorly you can titrate your flexion gap. So again, hypothetically, suppose you are between 65 and 67.5 and you put your pins as per 67.5 and you want to then come to 65, you use this instrument, come down two millimeters so that you are flush with the anterior surface and you are not cutting too much posteriorly. And posterior medial, we should cut about nine or 10 millimeters. What is the size of the thickness of the distal femur condyle? We should cut that much posterior medial that balances our flexion and extension gap. And we cut the tibia then, the tibia then balances both the gaps equally. So it's important to reference your posterior medial condyle, which should be about anywhere between 9, 10 mm, which is the same as the thickness of your distal femur cut. Another advantage of Biomet is that you have this thin patella, which is only 6.2 millimeters. So when you have a thin, very thin 6.2 millimeter patella, uh, we can in thinner patella, which is, so you can see here that the thickness is only 6 millimeters. 
So in thin patellas where the overall thickness is 20 millimeters, uh, you resect 6-7 millimeters and replace without over resecting or with the risk of over stuffing. So with great advantage for Indian female patients with thin patella, you can resurface patella even in patella thickness less than 20 millimeters. So that's the advantage of Biomet. Let's come to uh, the Legion knee, which is the Smith nephew knee. Uh, great design and the biggest advantage I feel is that the referencing jig here has, is both anterior and posterior reference. So what you can do here is that whichever way you want to reference, you can reference. So this is for anterior reference and this is for posterior reference. So in case you are absolutely accurate in size, suppose you are coming at 5, you can put your posterior reference and you will be fine. But if you are between let's say 6 and 7, you can reference so you are between 6 and 7, you can reference anteriorly, then you can put a 6 block, see how much you are cutting posteriorly, if you are cutting more you can upsize to 7 and since you are referenced anteriorly, you will be same on the anterior surface, so you will not notch or you will not be proud. So if you are exact on the same side, you can reference posterior because you know you are not going to notch, but if you are in between sizes, you can reference anteriorly put both the blocks and see how much are you cutting posteriorly because with the anterior reference you will be same on the anterior surface absolutely flush with the anterior surface of the femur but posteriorly you will see how much you are cutting and you can choose the size which cuts 9 or 10 millimeters. Another advantage is that if you want to go 2 up or 2 down you can use the similar instrument that we had in Biomet to go 2 up and 2 down and you are anterior referencing now you want to go 2 up you can go two up, you want to come two down, you want to, you can come two down, see how you are on the anterior surface which should absolutely be flush and you should not be notching or you should not be proud. That's the important thing. Tibia is an advantage because it's anatomical and the AP dimension of the lateral tibial condyle is smaller than the medial. So this is an anatomical tibia and that's, that's an advantage because you are not overhanging posterior laterally even when you externally rotate. So that's a great advantage. The preparation is also very simple and you're not losing too much bone on the tibial preparation. Now let's go to another design that's the Max and uh, the design of Max was ba published based on a published uh, paper by Vedya et al. in Indian Journal of Orthopedics depending on the size of our own Indian patients. So size starts from 52, the smallest size that is the size A and it goes from A, B, C, D, E, F. So you have more sizes, a smaller box, the reference is again anterior. So you reference anteriorly and you can do either 3 or 5 degree external rotation and if you are in between sizes so you are referencing anteriorly so if you choose two sizes in between sizes you can see how much you are cutting posteriorly because anteriorly again you will be the same so you are putting your pins here say you are between E and F you can put E you can see how much you are cutting posteriorly if you are cutting too much you can go to F anteriorly you will be the same because it is anterior reference it's a good design, again uh, a very very deep patellar groove, patellar tracking is good and even without patella resurfacing, uh, especially in Indian patients with thin patella, even without patella resurfacing the results have been good. It's been in use for quite some uh, many years and we are seeing some early published evidence uh, with this design as well in Indian General of Orthopedics also in uh, one more general of arthroplasty, there was a recent paper on uh, 5 to 8 year results of this design. Now, uh, now let's come to one more knee which is the Asclep knee, um, Columbus knee and uh, this design is again you have narrow in each size just like the Smith nephew where you have narrow. So in Smith nephew and Asclep you have narrow in both the designs. So if you want to downsize just because of ML overhang, you don't need to do that. You can take a narrow size. In Indian patients, the ML width of the femur is smaller. And sometimes we think we are overhanging. And for that, to prevent overhang, we downsize. But when we downsize, we cut more of posterior femur condyle. So here we don't need to downsize. We only need to take a narrow uh, and will not do any ML overhang.
the reference is again anterior as you can see that the, these two holes move with the uh, with the anterior reference so this is an anterior reference jig and again if you want to upsize or downsize you will not cut more anteriorly or sharp on the anterior surface and you will titrate your flexion gap the ap cutting block again has a plus 2 minus 2 slot so if you are proud you can come down if you are notching you can come up so this is a great advantage is some of these recent designs especially uh, smith nephew and askelov that you can come up and down on the ap cutting block the tibia has also uh, many sizes it's got two in each tibia size so you can reference your tibia according to the ap and the ml width of the femur now so this is the advantage one more design that is a striker nrg that's a single radius design a very good long term results the only problem is that in indian patients because it's a single radius design the width of each femur is very big so sometimes in indian ladies you see overhang with the striker nrg design but it's an advantage because it's single radius it does not have mid flexion instability and that's also proven in uh, a few papers very good stability overall but because it's wider in ml width sometimes it can cause an overhang so friends just to summarize this once again uh, let's go to each knee quickly and this is a summary so pfc good long term results higher box more patellar crepitus uh, posterior reference disadvantages only uh, you can downsize one on femur and tibia uh zimmer good design very good patello femoral tracking minimal patello symptoms anterior referencing you commit on the lug holes initially at the time of putting your ap jig that's a slight disadvantage but otherwise very good long term results only six sizes but when you are downsizing between e and f you have to be careful because you will be cutting quite a bit of posterior medial condyle or posterior condyles biomed 10 sizes Uh, advantage in terms of sizes posterior reference any degree of external rotation not just 3 and 5 you can reference from 0 to 10 depending on your interepicondylar axis ability to go two up and two down depending on you, whether you want to reference you want to come two up and two down but be flush with the anterior surface and you can titrate your flexion gap smith nephew great design your ability to come down to narrow helps you prevent downsizing those in indian patients sometimes we have ml overhang and we downsize to prevent ml overhang thus cutting more posterior medial condyles that's an advantage in smith nephew that you can take a narrow size anatomical tibia good design the ap cutting jig is a great one because you can use both anterior and posterior reference uh, then max again uh, sizes according to our own patients good early long term results um, jig is anterior reference again you want uh, notch or become over proud on the anterior surface depending on your uh, correct sizing and finally askel up uh, more sizes again a narrow design anterior reference and you can go plus up or minus 2 on the ap jig as well so you are sure that you are flush with the anterior surface and you can titrate your flexion gap so friends i hope this this uh, small video will be useful to you in choosing the right knee for your patient let me reiterate this is not to promote any one design but this is to give you the right facts the scientific evidence of how each knee has been performing over a period of last you know, 15 to 20 years and also based on my experience of the use of uh, each of these knee thank you very much